Now there are excellent precedents in this regard. There are other countries around the world, other cities around the world who take a similar approach. But even Mr. O'Farrell's liberal colleagues in Western Australia have followed New South Wales lead here. And Western Australia introducing virtually an identical system of independent panels to the one that we have in New South Wales. And why wouldn't they? The numbers that we have to date are encouraging. The joint regional planning panels are taking on average 110 days to determine a development application compared to the 249 days on average taken by local councils. And in addition, the New South Wales Housing Code, code provides that 10 day checklist style approach to new homes, saving 110 days and $6,500 on average per application. Again, on these two initiatives, a clear point of difference between the government and the opposition. And in a recent article in the Sydney Magazine, Mr O'Farrell asserted the best way to address a number of issues, whether it be housing affordability or infrastructure or in support for the arts, was to have a strong economy. Well, this is undoubtedly true, but you cannot have a strong economy if you slow up and you clog up the planning system in the state. And we'll continue to improve and streamline the planning system, considering how the recent initiatives uh, introduced as part of the Nation Building and Jobs Plan Stimulus Act could be applied in other circumstances. Those amendments have allowed New South Wales to lead the nation in the delivery of school, project, school uh, infrastructure and social housing projects. And so we want to see how that approach might work in other settings, be it uh, infrastructure, be it commercial development, be it residential development. For us, cutting red tape is core business. On business development, we've set ourselves a goal of cutting red tape by $500 million by June 2010. And changes implemented to the 31st of December 2009 have already contributed $338 million to that target. We've conducted targeted reviews in specific areas of regulatory burden, and we've seen a number of important reforms, including exempt and complying codes for commercial, in industrial, and retail uses. And these will save, save businesses money every time they renovate their premises or change their use. In transport, of course, major changes are underway with the first integrated transport and land use plan here in New South Wales, and a fully funded $50 billion transport infrastructure plan to back it up. That integration, making it easier to provide jobs closer to home, transport to workplaces, homes closer to jobs, and provide more work options to the people of greater metropolitan Sydney. These are all big benefits to business in this city. Now the construction of our $2.1 billion Southwest Rail Link already well underway, and our Western Express program will deliver vastly improved public transport, vastly improved uh, capacity on our rail system right across the network. And we will have more to say about that in the coming days and weeks. Now there's much more I could talk about, but indeed I need to allow some time to announce another initiative. And that is also about keeping New South Wales first. New South, ladies and gentlemen, New South Wales is leading Australia's international tourism recovery. Data from Tourism Research Australia's International Visitor Survey shows that the number of international visitors to New South Wales increased by almost 7% last quarter, with visitor nights up by almost 13%. This around three times the national average increase in nights. New South Wales is the number one state for international visitors, visitor nights, and expenditure. Mo mo more international visitors are coming to Sydney and to New South Wales. They're staying longer and they're spending more. This is fantastic news for the economy and for the tourism industry after a tough 2008. And we'll do what it takes to keep New South Wales at, to, out in front to ensure that New South Wales retains that title of the entertainment capital of the country. So today I announced an overhaul of Events New South Wales, a major revamping of the government's approach to events attraction in this state. While I will retain oversight of Events New South Wales, we will create a new portfolio and a minister for major events, Ian MacDonald. 
This Minister, uh, Minister McDonald, as Minister for Major Events, will be dedicated to the acquisition and the attraction of events to this state. As the Minister for State and Regional Development, the Minister will have accountability on a day-to-day -day basis for Events New South Wales, meaning that between the Premier and the Minister, Events New South Wales will have an enhanced effort in securing major events for the state. A high-level whole of government cabinet committee will be established, comprising the Minister for Tourism, the Minister for Western Sydney, including Sydney Olympic Park, the Minister for Arts and the Minister for Gaming and Racing. That committee will be reported, will be created, and it will report to me. And I'm delighted, particularly delighted, to announce that the internationally recognised business leader and a man of great ability, John Conde, will be has been appointed as the chairman of Events New South Wales. It's terrific to have someone the stature of John Conde to step up to the plate and to take on this responsibility. To be sure, he has big shoes to fill in John O'Neill, who did a great job setting up events in New South Wales, establishing the events calendar for this state, something that attracts over $500 million of economic activity. It's now an opportunity to take events in New South Wales to the next level. And I'm quite pleased that uh, Minister McDonald will take on this role and that he will be supported by our cabinet colleagues and working with John Condy in this particular uh, and exciting next chapter for Events New South Wales. So not only will Events New South Wales continue to report to the Premier, but with this structure behind it, we're quite sure that this gives Events New South Wales the prominence in government and in this state that it deserves. So we are sending a clear message to the world. New South Wales is open for events business. We want to build on the success we're seeing in tourism and continue to attract major new events to the impressive calendar we already have. This is just another aspect of how we're looking constantly to do things differently in New South Wales, to do business differently, to make business easier in this state. I know, with our respect Stephen and Patricia, that this approach to events was not one of your 10 ideas, but I might humbly suggest it could possibly be the 11th. So, of the things we've touched on today, and given the breadth of your report, we share so much common ground with the Chamber, and we're already acting on many of your areas of interest, because our interests, of course, are mutual. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy and initiative. Thank you all for your ongoing contribution to New South Wales. Thank you.